So Trump the other day went to a UFC fight. And, um, you know, whenever he's there, he, he shakes hands with all the celebrities and he, you know, plays up to the crowd and the crowd cheers him. Obviously, the UFC fan base, base is very right wing. Um, and at one point, Trump went up to Joe Rogan and shook his hand. Um, and Dave Rubin saw this clip and uh, he sort of pissed off at Joe Rogan. He sort of goes in against Joe Rogan and basically prods him and scolds him and is like, hey, asshole, you're shaking his hand. You're being all buddy buddy. But are you going to vote for him? Are you going to endorse him? He's basically like, hey, you're a bitch. Like, you flirt with the right, but you don't actually endorse the right. So anyway, uh, let's watch this, and I'm going to have a lot to say about it. Thank you, sir. All right, so first, did you catch that last second there? That was him over the weekend shaking hands with Joe Rogan and big smile from Rogan and everything else. So, like, are you going to tell people, are you just not going to vote for him? Or, look, like, you could shake hands with somebody and not support them, but, like, what is it that you're not supporting? What is it that you don't think the Republicans are doing better? God, I love how simple he is, bro. This man has the brain of a toddler. First of all, as you all just saw, it was Trump reached out to Rogan, put his hand out. So what are you going to do if a former president puts their hand out to shake your... I don't care how... But you could be the biggest hater in the world. You can despise that president. You're not going to... You're not going to walk away. Well, to be fair, that'd be the most gangster shit I've ever seen in my life. Like, that takes some real fucking balls for a former president to put their hand out to shake your hand, and then you're like, peace, bitch, I'm out. But he obviously, he's not, he's not going to cause a scene at UFC and then make the UFC all about him and Trump and not about the fight. Jesus Christ, man. But he's like, obviously, you got to support him now, right? You got to support him now, right? Oh, my God. What a simpleton. Are you going to tell people, are you just not going to vote for him? Or look, you could shake hands with somebody and not support them. But like, what is it that you're not supporting? What is it that you don't think the Republicans are doing better? I, okay. I just, I have to, I have to weigh in on that one. What do you not like about what he's done, bro? What do you not like about it? This is like now the third segment in the same day that I'm running through this list. I don't know. Uh, 91 felonies, fake elector plot, says he wants to terminate the Constitution, destroy the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau killed the regulations in the predatory payday loan industry, cut taxes for the rich, increased drone strikes over 400%, kept us in Iraq and Afghanistan, randomly and illegally assassinated a top Iranian commander, tried to coup Venezuela, ripped up the Iran agreement, signed a pro-torture executive order, wants war with Mexico, uh, armed Saudi Arabia as they committed a genocide and then vetoed a bill to stop us arming Saudi Arabia, says he wants to ban socialists and communists from even coming in the country, do like ideological thought screening, Wants to expand the Muslim ban, outsource 200,000 jobs, Project 2025. Like, pff, what is it, bro, that you don't like about him, bro? Obviously, there's nothing to not like, bro. God, he's been in that right-wing bubble too long, man. His head is lodged firmly up Trump's ass now. And what's so ironic is that during the primary, his head was lodged up DeSantis's ass. And he had all these, all of a sudden, he could see all the criticisms of Trump. Hey, man, that's not quite fair what you're doing over here. Hey, man, that policy's not exactly right. Hey, man, you're not the best one to lead us forward. Now that DeSantis is out of the picture, and DeSantis bent the knee and cucked himself to Trump, now Dave Rubin's right there behind him. Oh, why don't you endorse Daddy Trump? Do it. Do it. You should say that you are voting for Trump. Like, you do this show, you have an incredible amount of influence. It's admirable. It's, it's honest. It's good. All of that stuff. I don't think Rogan is going to vote for Trump. I think he's going to vote for RFK. I'm curious, what do you guys think? Post it in the comment section below. If Joe Rogan had had to do like a ranked choice voting thing, here's my guess how he would go. RFK number one, whoever the libertarian candidate is number two, uh, then probably Trump, then probably, oh no, you know what? I take that back because I forgot about Cornell. I'd say RFK number one, he would do RFK number one, Cornell West number two, the libertarian candidate number three, Trump number four, then maybe Jill Stein number five, and Biden last. That's my guess. If he had a ranked choice voting shit, that's my best guess as to how he would do it. I genuinely think he picks RFK over Trump 10 out of 10 times. Because you know, Rogan was obsessed with all the COVID stuff and all the vaccine stuff, and RFK really reflects what Rogan's beliefs are on that. So for Dave Rubin here to be scolding him, like, just fucking, but just endorse him, bro. Just, just fucking support him, bro. You do this show, you have an incredible amount of influence. It's admirable, it's, it's honest, it's good, all of that stuff. But at the end of the road, are you going to not tell people what you're going to do, or are you not going to vote? And what, what would be really the point of that? The point of that, Dave Rubin, is that you are explicitly a political show, right? That's what you are. He doesn't view himself like that. Now, I agree that oftentimes 
he crosses over into that lane, and sometimes he is purely in that lane when he interviews a politician here or there, when he talks about politics for 70% of an episode. But he doesn't view himself, he views himself as like, I'm just an apolitical type guy, but I'll give you my opinion if you ask it, and we can talk about political stuff, but I'm largely saying not really my lane. That's how he views himself. It's not like you, Dave Rubin, where your whole thing, politics, 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 all day long. Okay, let's keep going. I can't imagine if I was doing this show every day and you guys didn't know who I was going to vote for or I was just going to sit out at the end. There's so much we're learning here. So Dave, I need you to understand something. For the longest time, you kind of did do that, right? Originally, you were with the Young Turks and you're like, I'm a progressive, I'm a lefty. And then it became, oh, I don't like how Jenk spoke to Sam Harris and, uh, Sam Harris is being unfairly strawmanned, and so now I'm still, I'm a classical liberal, but also I'm with Sam Harris on those Muslims being really evil, and I'm going to try to enter that, like, new atheist sort of lane. So he went from progressive to classic liberal slash new atheist, then he uh, moved on to, like, centristy, then he moved on to, like, libertarian-y, and then finally, it was, you know, the why I left the left thing. And it went from I'm a classical liberal to that basically means I'm conservative to let me suck off DeSantis to let me suck off Trump. That's where, so like there was a whole transition from beginning to end. And by the way, when was he most popular? When he was in that weird middle ground where he would bolster conservative talking points but self-describe as classic liberal because then his role was I'm the guy who is a liberal but I'm going to say you conservatives are right about basically everything. And that's when he got the most eyeballs, because conservatives love to hear that even this guy who self-labels different from me agrees with me, because I have so much common sense and I'm right about everything. That's when he was most relevant. Now, the mask is off, he's just doing the MAGA tap dance every day, and in that scenario, nobody gives a fuck what you have to say anymore, dude. Again, I'm going to repeat this question. Why would they want to watch you when they could watch a Ben Shapiro or a Steven Crowder? who's been in that lane and repping it from the very beginning, and they're better at it than you are, right? You're not particularly intelligent. You're not particularly witty. You're not particularly funny. Your whole thing, your whole appeal was, I'm the liberal who's going to tell conservatives they're right. Now you're like, I'm a conservative who's telling conservatives they're right. No more mystery, right? No more intrigue. Now it's just you're any other fucking asshole who's a right-wing talk host. So why would they pick you when they could pick somebody who's way better at it? They wouldn't. And it's almost like he's begging Rogan, like, hey, man, come down here with me, <laughs> right? Like, just take the mask off, out yourself as I'm, I'm a conservative Republican, self-label it, and then lose the intrigue and the mystique and the people who would argue, no, actually, they're, you're not that, they're the other thing. And then, you know, there's more eyeballs over you on you in a situation like that. It, it's almost like he's begging Rogan to make his mistakes. Do the same thing I did, where I became less relevant. Do that. Have some balls here, man. Joe, you uh, fled California. He said, have some balls here. I was going to vote for where I was just going to sit out at the end. Like, come on, ha have some balls here, man. Joe, you fled California, right? You lived outside of LA. You fled California because of taxes and went to Texas. That also has a little something to do with Republicans running Texas. Well, you've oh. evolved properly, but now you got to vote the right way. The oh my God, how smug and condescending. You evolved properly. Oh my God. Oh, God. Dave Rubin's thing for the longest time was, I believe in freedom, bro. Freedom, freedom, freedom. And then there's like 78 bills that come out of Texas and Florida that are anti-freedom. And he's like, I still love freedom, bro. Please, Jesus Christ. Can't even smoke weed legally in Texas. They're like, the home of the free, bro. You like all of those policies. You largely like... Donald Trump, you like that he shows up to UFC, so you've got to get there. He said you like that he shows up to UFC, so you got to vote for him. <laughs> oh, toddler brain, man. Toddler brain. They'll probably be a little bit better than the Democrats. He seems to be stuck a bit in that kind of Bill Maher-ish spot of like, oh, I can see how horrible everything is with the Democrats and wokeness and all of that stuff. But he had a, he had a bit of a strange uh, piece on his show from yesterday where he basically said the Republicans are just as bad as the Democrats. And until we get past that, because it just ain't true and we'll show you oh. some evidence of it. Oh, sure you will. He's such a fucking simpleton. He does I got a million problems with Bill Maher. Bill Maher is going to be voting for Joe Biden over Donald Trump, right? And this, it like doesn't compute for him. He's like, wait, I don't understand. You do, like you bash wokeness. You bash the left a lot. 
I don't understand. How could you not just support Trump? Well, Dave, I hate to break it to you. Biden is pretty conservative. Biden is pretty conservative. Biden is like the old school, you know, center right kind of guy. I use that term loosely because, of course, our political spectrum in this country is fucking psychotic. But you get the point. And for a guy like Rogan, yeah, he does a lot of the same, you know, anti-wokeness talking points, does a lot of the same bolstering right-wing narratives type stuff. There's no doubt about that. But ultimately, Bill Maher agrees more with Joe Biden than he does Donald Trump. He despises Donald Trump. And uh, Rogan agrees way more with RFK than he does with Donald Trump. So you're going to have to sit back and just accept it when those guys happen to do a rant every other week that agrees with some of your positions, you're just going to have to accept that that's as good as it's going to get for you, bro. Because, ironically, this is a guy who pretends, I'm all against the tribalism, bro, and the groupthink, bro, and all he's doing here is begging for more tribalism and more groupthink. And, hey, come be with our cult, and we'll check off the boxes down the list of everything that we agree on and how we all say the same goddamn things over and over. It doesn't compute for him. That it's like those people can agree on a good chunk of it, but then in other areas, they just don't. They just don't. So, but that, hey, look, look, you want to know where this really comes from? I, you all know where this really comes from. This really comes from Ruben, last time he was on Rogan's show, got fucking humiliated. He got embarrassed because Dave called him out on a bunch of his bullshit when... Ruben tried to say, you know, I'm a libertarian. I like having no regulation. And then uh, Joe was like, well, what about like for building codes and shit? And he's like, yeah, no, I like the idea of the government not getting involved in that. And Rogan's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I work construction. You absolutely need rules. You need laws. You need to enforce that the electric line can't be near the water line and that you have a sturdy foundation. Because if you don't, people will try to make a buck and they'll build it all faulty. And then three and a half years in, the thing fucking collapses on your head. You can't have the Wild West and no regulation. He's like, well, you know, I like the idea of it intellectually, but maybe you're right. And I don't necessarily agree with the thing I just said five seconds ago. <laughs> he got humiliated on that. He got humiliated on a number of things. And he was never invited back on. Because Joe views him as a toddler brain. And so we still heard over that. And so that's where this comes from, right? It's a little prod. I fucking have some balls, man. Back Trump like the rest of us. Come on. All right, Dave. It's getting sad even for you. All right, guys. That's the show. Love you all very much. Everybody do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon so you get a notification when a video drops. You can support the show on Patreon below if you're so inclined. Click that link. Five bucks a month, two bucks a month, whatever it is. Deeply, deeply appreciate it. You guys know I never talk to any advertisers ever. So you guys help fund this show from the ground up. Um, or And you could support uh, Crystal Kyle and friends on Substack. You could click that link below as well. And I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.